as he eliminates one of poker's young guns. And his voice will be heard into the third round. To win the National Heads Up Poker Championship from the Golden Nugget in downtown Las Vegas, you've got to beat six of the world's best players. And for more information on all these players, log on to HeadsUpPokerChamp.com. All the tournament info you need at HeadsUpPokerChamp.com. Back inside to action at one of our seven outer tables now where Gus Hansen, seated on your right, the winner of the Poker Superstars, battles one of poker's unique talents. He always dresses in black. He's a ballroom dancing enthusiast, Chris Jesus Ferguson. Chris is strictly a tournament player. Never plays in any of the side games. On the other hand, Gus Hansen loves to play in the side games, loves to play anywhere. Nice hand for Chris with a pair of ladies. Huge hand. Huge hand in any game, particularly in heads up. And he raises to 6,000. Ace tray off suit for Gus. You never can tell what Gus is going to do. Poker's man of a thousand faces stewing on this one. I don't think you can find two guys with more contrasting looks than Gus Hansen and Chris Ferguson. Hanson calls, and the flop comes for King King. Good flop for Chris Ferguson. Most flops without an ace would be good flops for Chris. Gus checks. And Chris will bet out now 8,000. I like that play. And you never can tell what Gus Hansen is going to do. He is Mr. Unpredictable. He's not going out immediately. Oh, here goes Gus Hansen earning that reputation as a loose player. He'll raise to move all in. I think what happened here is Gus put Chris on a better ace, ace 10, ace jack, and he thought Chris would lay it down. He didn't realize Chris had a hand as strong as Queens. There's no way that Chris is going to lay this down. Chris always thinks about things. He never moves instinctively unless he has the absolute nuts. He's a deliberate player. Chris indeed calls. That was music to Chris's ears. Gus saying he plays bad. Chris turns over his queens. Now Gus needs an ace, running threes, running kings. Anytime you need running anything, you're in trouble. Let's see Chris Ferguson, a big favorite here. Walk up with a hand. Turns a nine of spades, no help for Gus. Now he's down to just an ace to save him. It's okay to play that way. He's trying to justify his play. Chris Ferguson, the PhD in computer sciences, knows his odds have gotten even better here. And the river is an eight of diamonds. Chris Ferguson advances by eliminating Gus Hansen. Uh, that played bad. That trademark bad. aggressiveness, which has won a lot of tournaments for Gus Hansen, betrayed him much. here. He overplayed his hand and misread Chris time. Ferguson. Yeah, I had a bunch of good hands. So we go from the genteel sportsmanship at the outer table back to the poker cage match at our featured table and rejoin Phil Helmuth and Paul Phillips. Helmuth was suited ace eight. Phillips has seven three, he checks. Flop comes seven five six. This gives Paul a pair of sevens and an inside straight draw, but it gives Phil Helmuth an open end straight draw, also a backdoor flush draw. Phillips leads out with four thousand. Four thousand, huh? It's an awfully big bet. Phil doesn't have anything right now. He has a great potential, though. Helmuth calls. And the turn, big card, four of hearts. That gives them both straights. Paul Phillips has the low end of the straight. He checks. 
Phil Helmuth has the high end. And Helmuth leads out with 4,000. That's a cautious bet, Matt. Although Phil does have the high end of the straight, he doesn't have the absolute nuts, the absolute best hand. An 8-9 is the best hand, and Phil Helmuth is notorious for not getting himself trapped. Phillips calls. That made Phil comfortable. Rivers and nine of clubs. Nothing has changed. Paul Phillips has the bottom end of the straight. Phil Helmuth now has the high end of the straight. The only higher possible hand would be an 8-10, but he's not worried about that now. He's trying to extract as much money from Paul Phillips as he can. He might even suspect that Paul has the bottom end. 10,000. And Helmuth bets 10,000. Paul Phillips got a lot to think about. Well, Phil, all my instincts tell me you have it, but I don't see how I can lay this down under these conditions. Phillips calls, so Helmuth takes down a big pot and takes the lead. If you raise the flop and putting it all in, man, you might get there anyway. I know. I didn't want to do that. I mean, I figured you had a, a pair and a straight draw. There's no confrontation, no mumbling. Feels all smiles when he wins a pot. And all business when he sets a goal. I decided that uh, I was going to be a professional poker player, and then I decided I'm going to win the World Series of Poker, and then after I won the World Series of Poker, I said I'm going to be the best poker player of all time. have something. I don't know what it is. I don't win every time. But I want to become the greatest poker player of all time. And I can do it. Well, some people question Phil's attitude, but it's really hard to question his success. He is one of poker's most accomplished players. Phillips looks down at nine deuce. I just can't take it, man. I mean, I'm not that demanding. You don't need aces every hand. How about just a 10? A 10. Yes, it has been a long time since he's caught any cards. A 10. I mean, of all the things to beg the poker gods for, A 10, I would say, is pretty freaking low on the list. He's starting to make Phil oh, Helmuth look normal. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no! You had me. Stop. You at had least me, you, but, but not dominated. At least you folded to me twice. Two in a row. I'm Paul Phillips is in the need of some medical attention right here, I think. <laughs> it's intolerable. Are we finally going up in a minute? I cannot wait until this is just the all-in luck fest. That's, that's what I'm ready for. Paul says you can't wait until this is the all-in luck fest. Stop it! Stop it! Don't give me a 10! This kind of irrational behavior is totally unacceptable to Mr. Helmuth. <laughs> I want a 10, a jack, a queen, a king, an ace, or any two cards with less than four places between them. I think I've just narrowed down it. All right, we need some time to remove the sharp <laughs> objects and shoelaces from the pavilion. We'll return to this calm, calculating match right after this. Action finishing across the outer tables. Carlos Mortensen defeated our former NBC colleague, Evelyn Ng. And the tournament lost another female when Lyle Berman eliminated Jennifer Harmon. Huck Seed finished off 2004 World Series champion Greg Raymer. And Raymer's predecessor, Chris Moneymaker, lost as well, falling to Mimi Tran. And as good as all that action was, dare I say, Gabe, it pales in comparison to the fun we've seen at the feature table together. here as we rejoin Phil Helmuth and Paul there. Phillips.